Welcome to Sleepless in St. Kadar, where nostalgia replaces REM cycles. I'm Kitty. And I'm Ange. And we haven't slept. 30 years. This is a podcast about the 90s Disney cartoon, Darkwing Duck, and also the 2003 Dynamite Comics comic book, Darkwing Duck. Wait, we're in a time machine right now. 2023. Good lord. We would, wouldn't have slept in 23 years if that was the case, but regardless, we haven't slept in a very long time. Um, and neither has, I guess, Dynamite in making Darkwing comics. They have not slept on that because they are continuing to do that, and we will be continuing to talk about them uh, today. Uh, on a number, uh, like, just off the top of your head, how many times do we see naked chicken feet in this episode, in this uh, issue? Hmm, I'm gonna say zero, but... Okay, good. That's the perfect number. <laughs> I make no promises because I only read it this morning. It, it it dropped this morning, so I've only perused it once. But yeah. Well, we will have a running chicken foot count there just is, in case. There is some pudding. As we recall from last time, that pudding, uh, well, as far as I know, it is hunker. Yes. Little hunker pudding foot. Pudding boy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is issue number four of the Dynamite Darkwing Duck series. When we last left off, Darkwing decided he did not want to be Darkwing anymore because of Goslin's safety. And then Launchpad decides to go work for Morgana's dad, Moloculo, because he's out of a job. And mm. Darkwing decides to drag Morgana into the suburban life, and it goes as well as you expect it to, which is not at all. And I think when we, yeah, when we last left off, they were leaving the school, which immediately as soon as they left was invaded by a bunch of vines. And right, because like the school gardener was missing or something, all the gardeners are disappearing. Yeah, although I recall it being a community garden, so I don't know if they're... Okay tied in to each other but yeah and then little pudding honker was saying it's bush root <laughs> yeah honker was turned into pudding by morgan Ooh, pudding honker he is very cute i must say he always holds a place in my heart that little pudding boy <laughs> honker in all shapes and forms is appreciated yes as we record this both Ange and i have different honker icons <laughs> So our avatars are lighting up as we talk, both as Honker. So Mine is from one of the upcoming covers. I can't remember if it's issue five or issue six. They posted this one cover that looks anime inspired is the only way I can describe it. They're very cutesy, chibi like characters and it's Goslin, Launchpad and Darkwing. But then there's just a little teeny microscopic Honker on the page as well. And I was like, that is now my icon. <laughs> And mine is the little honker peeking out of a garbage can or something that was part of the, the Play-Doh set um, <laughs> that came back out back in the 90s. Perfect. So we are two honkers meeting under the cover of blankets to discuss the Puddin' Boy. Pudding Boy and all his pals. So, yeah, I guess we'll get into this. Again, I don't see a title for this issue, so it is just issue four. Writer is Amanda Dybert. Carlo Loro is doing the art and color. Jeff Eckleberry doing the letters. The main cover this time around was by Leslie Lyrics Lee. And Nate Cosby is the packager and editor. We start off, Kitty, with your favorite person, the angel of Avian Way, her Muddlefoot. <laughs> oh, he's back. He is back. We start off with the angel of Avian Way, her Muddlefoot, and much to my surprise, Drake actually seems friendly because we see Herb waving to Drake over the fence and he says, hiya, Drake. And you see Drake saying, hello, Herb, and not looking too annoyed by that. Maybe, maybe life is... Been... Leaning into his suburban life. It's like He's, he's got to be friends with the neighbors, yeah. I'm going to send you that picture because it's Herb, and I can't not send you a Herb. I am glad that you know your role in this podcast. Oh, there he is. Drake is mowing his lawn. So Herb has appeared in, like, what, three out of the four issues so far? 
yeah, not a bad run. I mean, I I honestly did not expect him to be in any of them. I had my dreams, and so far, taken taken most of the boxes. Yeah, the one on the muddle foot front. The one thing. <laughs> so. <laughs> This entire scene had me like, okay. So Morgana comes out with a drink. It's, I think you can see it there next to the panel with Herb. It's like a little mm-hmm. drink. And she asks Drake if he's thirsty. And he says, I was until I saw the spider garnish, which fair, uh, that would be his reaction. And he says, I adore you, Morgana, but sometimes you have to let a glass of lemonade be a glass of lemonade. And to his credit, he does actually drink it. <laughs> and as he's chugging it, <laughs> oh, I can't stop. Okay. <laughs> Morgana is looking at him while he's chugging it. And she says, oh, that's not lemonade. And then he spits it out. And it's never expanded upon. Oh, no. <laughs> Uh, Morgana, Morgana, what, what, what is that liquid? <laughs> what is it? <laughs> you know what it is. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> I don't think that was meant to be the joke, but <laughs> <laughs> I somebody consciously colored that yellow. I mean, I guess he did call it lemonade, but. Mm. We'll okay. We'll, maybe maybe it's apple juice. I I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Moving on from the mysterious liquid. Morgana <laughs> asks him, "Are you sure you don't miss the superhero life?" And Drake says, "Well, what makes you think that?" And then it pulls back to show that when he was mowing the lawn, he had mowed Darkwing Duck's head silhouette like the one on the spotlight Mm. into the lawn subconsciously Mm -hmm. and morgana's looking down it and she says must be the psychic abilities from my mother's side which i don't think morgana's ever mentioned her mother ever that i can recall so i i kind of like that yeah yeah i'm trying to think of molecular that he said said anything i don't think so i don't think they've mentioned the mom at all yeah i have my theories about Morgana's mom, my own head cannons, but I thought that was cup of dot lemonade. Drink, Drake just drank her. <laughs> oh no, Drake! I'd like to introduce you to my mother. Oh no. <laughs> Next up, we've got Goslin rushing into the yard, and she says, "We need your help." And Drake's more concerned about her trampling over the lawn, and uh, he asks her if she has a homework emergency. And Goslin says, "I feel confident my grades are better than yours ever were." And Drake oh. kind of shrugs and says, harsh but fair. But I'm not so sure about that. Drake seemed like a bit of an egghead from what mm. I saw. Mm-hmm. We did. We did. Yeah, he was Drake the dweeb. Mind you, he could have still been bad. I know people who were smart, but were really bad in school. Bad at school. Anyways, so mm. potentially. Yeah. So uh, Goslin grabs him by the scruff of his shirt and says, that isn't the point. St. Canard is in trouble. And Drake dramatically puts his hand to his forehead like he's about to faint. And he says, let's get dangerous. Wait, no, I'm retired. Dramatic flair there. Mm. (laughs) He needs a fainting couch behind him real quick. He really does. And Goslin says, Bushroot has honker and he's still pudding. (laughs) <laughs> oh no and the double whammy the double whammy and the best part is I, I feel like this would make a really good out of context panel <laughs> Drake just turns around and says Bushroot is cooking citizens and then <laughs> Morgana steps in and says oh the pudding was actually my doing and Drake is horrified and he says you're supposed to be a reformed criminal and she says I am this wasn't business just pleasure which, in her defense, she wasn't trying to turn him into pudding. It was an accident. Yes. Goslin. Although I don't know why she would call that pleasure. Yeah. Or honker. Or honker. Goslin is just like, okay, enough of this. Can we get going? And she wants Darkwing to come back. And he's like, now I'm going to do this my way with some weed whacker. So he uh, says, no need for capes. And Edna Mode would <laughs> agree with that she she nods silently off screen and then we see drake has taken his lawnmower to the school which i think 
there's been a couple times in the cartoon where Bushroot got mowed by a lawn mower. So mm. mm-hmm. it holds up. <laughs> a known weakness. Tiss. And uh, he says, it's time to prune the bad seeds. And then we see, I think it's Bushroot actually, says, who's the amateur? He's going to hurt someone. Which, of course, maybe Bushroot's talking about the plants and himself. Mm -hmm. And he says, this guy needs to be schooled. And he grabs Drake, wraps him up with his tentacles. You know what I mean? His vines? That's a different comment. Meow. (laughs) And Drake is now, you know, entangled and being strangled, as is the lawnmower. And once again, Goslin says, so plan A is not really working. Can we please go to plan DW? And of course, Drake's like, nah, I got it all under control as he's being strangled. Mm-hmm. Yep, checks out. The children are fleeing in fear because this is happening at the school, of course. And one child says, I'll never eat another salad again. Just let me go. And Morgana steps in and she's flying around, zapping the plants. She zaps a tree and says, I was worried suburban life wouldn't be exciting. And she definitely is like, she would like Darkwing to also come back, I think, at this point, which I think she always did. I think she was just going along with this. Mm -hmm. So are the plants and things inside the school? They're like everywhere. So they're like wrapped around the school, but they are outside in the yard. Gotcha. In the schoolyard, I guess. And uh, she gets Drake out of the vines and she says, Dark darling, it might be time for you to come out of retirement. Drake says, Morgana, I can't talk right now. I've had a genius epiphany. It's time for me to come out of retirement. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Which, to be fair, yes, that's exactly what he would say. So Mm -hmm. he decides to slip into the gardening shed. So he does that and he pops back out as Darkwing says, I am the terror that flaps in the night. I am the neighbor's ill-timed leaf blower that wakes you too early in the morning. I am the shears that prune the weeds of destruction. I am the Darkwing Knight who returns. I am Darkwing Duck. And he is back. Which I have to laugh that Goslin was telling him like five times over, like, can you please bring Darkwing in? And he's like, nah, I'm good. And then finally Morgana's like, really, can you just, can you do it now? And he's like, ah, I think I will. And I will pretend it was my own idea this entire time. Well, but also that means that he brought the costume slash had a costume stashed at the school. Yes. And I have no doubt he carries a costume on him. It's like a security blanket. Just (laughs) has one with him wherever he goes. Mm Mm-hmm. So uh, Pudding Honker is wrapped up in some vines and Darkwing kicks them with a weed thwack and says, and I'm back. And Goslin's happy. She says, all right, Darkwing Duck is back. High five, Honker. And she turns to high five Honker and realizes he has no arms. (laughs) And so she high fives his little jiggly body and he just jiggles sadly. Oh, Honker. A picture of of course. (laughs) Please do. Because it is funny. I have to say, I also really like the art. I like the expressions and all that stuff. Oh, oh poor little honker. Little pudding boy. This poor little kid has been through so much. Jiggle, jiggle. He's just jiggling sadly. and Just jiggling sadly. He can't even high five. And I just realized they don't have five fingers. So nope. it, I guess it's a high four, technically. Mm, it's true. I wonder if they are even aware of that, or they're just like, ah, we don't know why it's called a high five. So Bushroot is, of course, surprised, and he says, Darkwing Duck, but I was told he retired. I was told specifically I could have the run of the town and the school. All I had to do was pledge my allegiance, too. And then he throws his little leafy hands over his bill and says, I gotta learn to keep my leaves sealed. So we now know that there is somebody behind the scenes that is uh, sending these baddies out because why else would Bushroot attack a school? Because all that homework is on paper. Oh, they do waste a lot of paper in schools. Mm Mm-hmm. Pencils made of wood. The list keeps going, Ange. (laughs) Well, Darkwing points his gas gun 
at him and says, Bushroot, you'll appreciate my newest invention as a man of science. And then he pauses and says, well, I guess as a shrub of science. And Bushroot just kind of stares back at him. Mandrake was right there. Ah, a mandrake of science. Because it's it's a double whammy, man and drake. And it's also, oh, it's a triple whammy. Anyway, I'm, I'm free for consulting work anytime <laughs> anybody wants to pay me. I will pay you. Thank you! In cheese. Perfect. So Darkwing fires his gas gun, which he has... Remember, he is an inv- he's like an inventor now, as we mm-hmm. established in the last issue. So he says, meet the Autumnizer instead of Atomizer. And Bushroot says, you mean the Automizer, you amateur? And he says, nope, I mean the Autumnizer. And he hits some plants, and basically it speeds them up so that it's from spring to autumn, so all the plants start shriveling up. Mm-hmm. And he says, I came up with this invention that breaks down chlorophyll, and you know what that causes, right, Doctor? And then he chases after Bushroot, points his gas gun at him while Bushroot tries to run, and he says, that's right, and Bushroot trips, falls over. Just as Darkwing says, fall. Ay. Ay. I kind of thought this was neat. When he hits Bushroot with the atomizer, I guess it speeds him up and it changes his colors. So his hair turns into this turquoisey blue color. And his body is more like a, a pale brown. So huh. basically more autumn colors. Okay. And he falls asleep. And... Mm. Darkwing says, a nice hibernation in jail is just the ticket, which I guess when you think about it, if Bushroot is a plant, maybe he does go through seasonal changes. Yeah, I guess so. Depends on the plant, I guess. Aren't there plants that are, you know, some... One and done. Yeah, Yeah. once a year and that, so... Perennials, annuals, we could go on. I'm not a (laughs) flowerologist, so... (laughs) Botanist. (laughs) <laughs> they drag Bushroot's husk, the cops, into the back of the paddy wagon. No shadowy figures by that paddy wagon? Oh, good point. Let me look. Mm, not that I can see. Nothing oh. obvious, anyways. In that uh, second issue, that was definitely just a grape jelly stain <laughs> that we have built this whole conspiracy into. <laughs> oh. Mayor Allison pops back up and tells him it's good to have him back. And Darkwing is, of course, like, well, good enough for the front page for the paper. Mayor Allison's just kind of staring at him while he's doing his thing. I kind of want to hope that he just, like, makes the front page of the school newspaper. But it's like dumbass steps on grass or something. And it's like a really embarrassing picture of him. That would be perfect. We do see the, the remnants of the battleground in the schoolyard. There's all these dead vines everywhere. Goslin is kicking some vines off of her <laughs> putting honker is just standing there in the, in the <laughs> she's just letting life happen to him and morgana is helping some of the kids out and the gardener says we're gonna need a bigger rake and darkwing says well good luck to you come along goslin everyone knows heroes don't stick around for cleanup which rude <laughs> mm-hmm Gizmo Duck would stick around for cleanup. You know he would. He would. He would rally all people. Like he'd have like those little pokey stick things to get the trash off the ground. He'd turn it into like a whole citywide cleanup event. He really would. But it's funny because mm-hmm. he just grabs Goslin, who grabs Pudding Honker, and <laughs> shoots his gun into the air. And I don't know what it attaches to. And then he just <laughs> swings away. And Morgana and the children and the gardener are just like, Staring off at him. As he Seriously, <laughs> <laughs> and my must return to my planet now. <laughs> um, yeah, that kind of I'm trying to remember which one it was. There was definitely like an old Spider-Man game where it was just like you could shoot your like webs to swim, like swing through the city, but there were you could do it when there was like nothing above you. <laughs> it's like what is where is what is this? That's what Dark Queen just did. Very much so. 
Wherever Darkwing has swung to, he is now ended up on the road. Of- <laughs> what if he just like hooked onto like a passing plane by accident and it was like what? <laughs> he might get gone. He's carrying Goslin and Honker, putting Honker on his back, just swinging, and they mm. land on the city roofs. And Goslin asks him how it feels to be the hero who flaps in the night, and Darkwing tells her that it feels right. He realizes that no matter what I do, I still have to worry about you. That's parenthood. And if you're going to be in danger, I might as well be the duck best suited to get you out of it. Which isn't the worst logic, because it's true. This is St. Kennard. Like, regardless of whether or not he's Darkwing, everybody's going to be in danger because there's always a villain of the week. Right. Like, him retiring isn't going to inspire all the villains to retire. But I also feel like that wouldn't be out of the scope of... Darkwing's expectations of himself <laughs> to be like, well, if I'm not here, what even is the point of them continuing on? They'll all just quit. Because what is a Moriarty without a Sherlock? I don't know how true it is. Very clearly, Darkwing has given up a bunch of times, and the villains have just been like, great, bye. <laughs> they don't even notice. <laughs> Finally, it's time for us to get some stuff done. There's this small child walking past and he points up at Darkwing and he says, look, mommy, it's Darkwing Duck. And Darkwing says, exactly. And I like to think that these are the children that eventually, like, he scares them from the rooftops, make them <laughs> cry at night. Mm-hmm. So Morgana has reappeared once again, silhouetted by the moon. And she says, this is so much better, right, Archie? Everything is back to normal. <laughs> As the kind of side-eye honker who's made of pudding still. Oh, poor honker. And Morgana cozies up to Darkwing and says, I do so prefer you, Dark and Mysterious. Darkwing says, personally, I don't feel I ever lost my edge. (laughs) And Morgana looks really... I'm going to show you this panel because I think it's cute. She's just blushing and I like it. A good Morgana macabre. Oh, yeah. She's cute. Little little patches of blush. Yeah, very cute. And she's got Archie in her hair. As so, every woman should. As every woman should. So Darkwing says, now there's just one more thing. I need to make everything right. So we're back in Transylvania. And they're traipsing through the forest. And Darkwing says, let's get dangerous. And Morgana says, come on, my family isn't that scary. And Darkwing says, only when compared to your cooking. And that sets off the Morgana trigger. Oh. The classic Morgana trigger. She's like, uh, bitch, excuse me? She doesn't actually (laughs) say that. I wish she did. (laughs) Oh, hell no. (laughs) She, She starts zapping at him. I'd watch what you say if you ever want to eat anything again. He says, usually I love it when sparks fly between us. And meanwhile, Goslin, I think this is adorable. Goslin has taken a page out of Banjo-Kazooie because she's got little Puddin' Honker in her backpack. She's just traipsing through the forest with him. Carrying him around. Carrying him around. <laughs> he's just silent. Well, like every panel that you've shown me of him, he's not saying anything. Like, does he say anything at all as a Puddin' Boy? Uh, actually, I think it will reveal, I think in the next page, it kind of explains it. Okay. So. Hunker had the power to turn back into a regular boy the whole time. He just preferred to be a pudding boy. <laughs> His dream. I'm going to show you this page too. Cause it's, it's what I imagine that the secret is. <laughs> <laughs> Here he is. Little pudding man. His little backpack. Still got his glasses on. <laughs> Real sad. So Goslin says, as much as I love being in the middle of your couple spats, can you please tell me what we are doing back here? You already got Morgana. So easily she forgets about Launchpad. (laughs) Apparently. She just, they just came back to see if Molecula was still straddling the front of the (laughs) (laughs) Just out of curiosity, for sure. (laughs) Darkwing, on the other hand, says, well, I'm looking for someone else. And he whips out a marshmallow, and he makes a campfire. 
I guess he knows that this is going to piss off Malaculo and attract him again like it did last time. And sure enough, like a bear, tiny, <laughs> Malaculo just lumbers out of the forest like a Bigfoot and pokes his head out and says, what are you doing back here? You, you settle down with a nice zombie. He says that to Morgana specifically. And Morgana says, you know, I've never been that interested in a guy with brains. And Darkwing says, yeah, she has me. And then he pauses and is like, wait a second. Oh. Because, yeah, it's okay, Darkwing. We know that you are a little head empty and we love you for it. <laughs> Your best quality. So Darkwing and Moloculo start arguing. He says, digs at my superior intellect aside. I have exactly who I want right here. <laughs> and Moloculo is like, disgusted because he thinks that he's talking to him because he says excuse me and Darkwing leans in and says you know you've missed me and I'm here to say I'll take you back and Moloculo recoils with disgust and says take me back I don't even want you near my daughter Darkwing says I can't go on without you and of course he's talking to Launchpad who's standing behind Moloculo like over his shoulder mm. he says what do you say Launchpad and Launchpad says, well, gee, DW, I do miss you, but... And then Moloculo and Darkwing start fighting over custody of Launchpad. <laughs> I guess Moloculo has, has gotten attached to him because he says he's mine. And Darkwing says he was mine first. <laughs> and Moloculo decides to make him a deal. He says, you can have Launchpad and I'll keep my daughter. And Darkwing is not going to be deterred by this and says, I've got a better deal. I keep them both. You keep out of my way. And they're eyeing each other down. There's the little anime lightning strike as they glare at each other. Ooh, I thought you were serious. Morgana interrupts them and says, I've got a better deal. Neither Launchpad nor I belong to anyone. So why don't the two of you just shut your beaks and let us decide for ourselves? And she... Starts waving her hands around and... She drops that mic and walks away, floats away into almost, the moon. That's almost kind of what happens, but she zips up their mouth. Literally, she puts a spell on them, so both their mouths get zipped up. Because they try to interrupt her and she says, shut your beaks. You tell them, girl. And then she has a, a moment of self-reflection that is one of those, how could you say something so controversial, but... <laughs> get so brave. <laughs> I wouldn't know if I'd call it brave, but she says, why is it that we always end up attracted to people who are exactly like our parents? Mm. Which so controversial. It's from, so true. A, from a psychological perspective, that is true. You tend to gravitate towards relationships that reflect the relationships you grew up with, whether it be a parent or a guardian. So not necessarily wrong, but it still like makes it kind of sound like she's got some daddy issues. Yes. But uh, I always thought the cartoon did, in fact, imply that Moloculo and Darkwing are a lot alike, and that's why they don't get along. I mean, they even both kind of wear the same style cape and color palette. Ooh, it's one of them has to go home and change. That's why they don't like each other. It's because they both showed up in the same outfit. And neither of them is uh, like leaving to change. Does Moloculo have his shoes on? Does he have chicken feet? He's got his shoes on. He is okay, safe, thank God. Safe from the curse. <laughs> the chicken foot curse. So Morgana says, I'm going to take a break from them both and go run my restaurant for a while. How about you, Launch? And Launchpad says, well, gee, the Thunder Quack was always intended for Darkwing. And both Darkwing and Moloculo are zipped shut and fuming. And I think it was kind of cute that Morgana was standing up for the both of them. She was advocating for Launchpad, too. And I thought that was mm -hmm. nice. Yeah. She's like, shut up. The adults are talking, but by adults, she means herself and Launchpad. Yes, and she starts to float away, like you said, but Goslin says, wait, and Morgana turns around. She says, well, if you miss my cooking, you can always come visit, and she says, the opposite of cooking, could you, and then she points at Honker, <laughs> because the poor boy is still pudding. Mm-hmm. And she says, oh, yes, quite, and she wiggles her fingers and turns him back with a pudding pop. And Honker says, where am I? So that kind of implies that Honker was in some sort of comatose pudding world and not really <laughs> conscious. 
<laughs> the journey in which Honker <laughs> underwent in his own mind as his body was turned into jello all around him. Man. It's interesting because we can see he has eyes and a face and he is emoting throughout this as a pudding boy. But he also seems to be confused, so... Wasn't he a pudding boy when he screamed it's Bushroot? Yes, maybe his brain just slowly deteriorated with time. <laughs> kind of like Goslin and Slime Okay, oh. we're okay. Oh, no. I will oh. also show you that page, because it's cute. Nobody dipped their fries in him, so there is that. And the next page is the final page, and it is... It... <laughs> Poor Honker. The next afternoon, we see Herb... And he's out mowing the lawn. Oh, yeah. Little Honker's sitting on the front steps. And Binky comes out and says, Honker, dear, would you like some pudding? And he runs away. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. oh, poor Honker. He's traumatized. He can never eat pudding again. No, the boy. And Goslin is looking over the fence and says, Don't you think you're abusing the automizer, Dad? And we see that he has zapped the lawn so that all the leaves have fallen off in advance. And he says, I didn't build something this genius to let it go to waste. And Launchpad is back as well. And Launchpad says, you know what they say, DW, pride goeth before the fall. And DW says, exactly. And in the fall, I don't have to mow my lawn. But you know what? You have to rake those leaves. Mm-hmm. I was kind of expecting him to be shooting Herb's lawn, but that's okay. That would be cruel, though. It would, but it seems like something Drake would do. Send you this, too. I want you to see Honker running away in terror. <laughs> oh, there he goes. <laughs> He's booking it. Nice to see Binky. I think this is the first time we've seen her. Yeah, she looks good. And that is the end of issue four. Oh, Goslin's white. No white feathers. Is she? I have my screen on the little tint, so it's hard to tell. Yeah. Which is funny, because they changed her eye color back to green. I only have one thing wrong at a time, I guess. Oh. Dun, 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 dun. There we go. Resolved itself very quickly. Yes. So I mentioned to Kitty before the podcast that I did have some thoughts and, like, a little bit of critique for this issue. Nothing, like super serious but i thought what was what could have been uh improved upon was the pacing because i feel like the description for this issue and the covers really make it feel like it was going to be more bushroot focused Mm. but in the grand scheme of things he was defeated pretty quickly within the first few pages and then the second entire half was just them going to transylvania to get launch pad back Mm-hmm. And it kind of what it it just kind of circles back and undoes what it did in the last issue. So it's sort of like they're back to square one. Yeah. Personally, I think the plot is fine, but I think I would have done it a little differently where I was thinking about how this scenario could play out in a way that merges the two plot lines and brings everything together a bit faster and more organically. And I was thinking, what if Drake is fighting off Bushroot and he's having trouble and Morgana is helping him and Bushroot manages to overpower them both. And just when it seems like they're really about to get their asses handed to them, Launchpad flies in with Moloculo on the Thunderquack sitting on the front. Of like, course. Like he was in the last issue, a callback. And then he does <laughs> that Dragon Ball Z launch at Bushroot because <laughs> Bushroot's attacking Morgana. <laughs> You could just even recycle the same panels. Yeah, like, it would be like a repeat of the joke where it's like, uh, and he'd be, you know, freaking out at Bushroot for attacking his daughter. So he punches Bushroot or whatever, and Bushroot releases Morgana and Drake, and that's when Drake decides he needs to switch back into Darkwing because he's not going to let Moloculo take the credit here because... Of all the people, I think Herb Muddlefoot, Gizmo Duck, and Moloculo are the three people that he would never want to be upstaged by. Mm. So I could see him. He changes back into his Darkwing outfit. He manages to defeat Bushroot, similar to how he has. 
And then it would turn out that basically what happened is, of course, in the last issue, Morgana agreed to move in with Drake, but she didn't. I, I just pretend like she never told her dad. She just left. So yeah. <laughs> I would imagine when he found out, he probably would tell Launchpad to drive him to St. Canard. He's like, we're going to St. Canard right now to fix this. And that brings Launchpad and Moloculo back to St. Canard a bit faster you could do that in less time, like less pages. You could get all of that in together. And then basically the plot would carry out similar for there where Launchpad would come back and Darkwing goes back to being Darkwing. Morgana goes off to, to deal with her restaurant because Darkwing and Molocula were being annoying as per usual. And I think that would free up a few more pages to either put towards the fight with Bushroot and maybe hinting at the overarching storyline because they never really addressed the fact that he was supposedly attacking the community garden with the gardener Mm -hmm. disappearing, but he was at the school. Yeah. And we didn't really see the return of the gardeners. So I don't know if that will ever be mentioned again or like, are they gone forever or if that will be a follow up? Yeah. If it's the next Morgana's lemonade. (laughs) But that's that's how I would have played it out. I feel like it would have just the pacing would be a little different and it would focus a bit more on the bushroot fight, but still bring in and resolve and tie up everything. And yeah, on the whole, the actual plot itself is fine. I have no issues with where they took it. I think for me, it's just where uh, time is devoted to which parts of the plot is Mm. for me what do you think yeah it just seems like uh if they were gonna do like darkwing quits being hero it should have lasted a little longer like i don't know to have it be completely undone by the end of this issue and everything be back to normal seems a little rushed but also he he quit being darkwing in the last issue yes no no uh was the end of issue two when at the very end he decides to quit and then Launchpad leaves and then at the beginning of issue three is the start of his suburban life. Okay. So I was also thinking like maybe it was just like a contract thing where it's like Darkwing has to appear in each issue. So he couldn't really not be Darkwing. But I don't I don't know. But eh, it's fine. The shoot really didn't get to do much that we were aware of i mean i guess he overgrew his school for some reason because someone told him he could (laughs) (laughs) that's and then there's six issues or five so six okay so i was about to say if next issue is the last issue it's gonna be interesting to see how it wraps up but we got two more and then the next one is supposed to be the ducktales villain yeah, in the description, it talked about Dr. No Good, the head of Fowl. And issue six as well kind of mentioned it. But I have a feeling like they brought in three of the Fearsome Five. We haven't seen Liquidator and we haven't seen Negaduck. But there is a Negaduck cover for issue six, one of the toy covers. Mm-hmm. where They do like the little action figures. They did one for Morgana, Launchpad, etc. So... I don't know if that's just they're doing that for fun or if Negaduck might pop up as either an overarching villain or... You It'd know. just be a shame not to use him. Yeah, like I'm wondering if either um, Dr. No Good is working for him or the other way around where Negaduck is just like doing stuff for him. I don't know. We'll see. What if Dr. No Good is just Negaduck on stilts? <laughs> I'd be fine with that. <laughs> Stilts in a trench coat. Yeah, I'm a different guy, whatever. Go do that thing. <laughs> Perfect. There it is. So we'll find okay. out. As far as I can tell, it doesn't look like there's going to be any more issues beyond that. There's already, when I went to Amazon, the pre-orders for issues five and six are available. Like I can, I already pre-ordered them and there's nothing beyond that. And I haven't seen any releases or descriptions. So I think it's probably just six issues. Mm. Yeah. See, if we're clamoring for more, if it's, this is fine. 
Yeah. It's just a little, a little something. Yeah, it's kind of, uh, I was thinking about it, and this comic is kind of how I feel about the Super Mario Brothers movie, which I saw <laughs> this week, in that it isn't like a huge masterpiece that is jaw-dropping and is rocking my world, but it's fun. Like, I, I'm enjoying it. For those of you who don't know, Ange is a very uh, is a is a Mario Brothers enjoyer. I she like enjoys that. herself some Mario's. I did, and I mean, it was a good movie, but it wasn't like the Mario Brothers movie was basically like it was kind of like this. It was very fast paced and didn't really delve in it into anything super deep with the characters. It just the plot moved along, and I feel like that's kind of the same thing here. So. Mm. I could kind of compare the two in that, like, it's enjoyable. It's, it's f you know, fun for all ages kind of thing. Yeah. It doesn't take itself too seriously. It doesn't expand on anything too, too much. It's just like, here's that thing you like, and we're going to do a take on it. And I assume that your pinnacle of cinema is the uh, 1980s Mario Brothers movie mm -hmm. with Bob Hoskins and John Leguizamo. Right? Dennis Hopper. The, the peak of video game movies. I actually <laughs> love watching that movie when I bust out the trivia for it. And then I just sit there and I read the trivia off as I'm watching the movie. <laughs> the trivia for that movie. It's, it's insane. Wild. Like, if for any of you who have never seen the, what what was it, 80s? Yeah, I th I'm thinking 89. It's, it is... I, I I unironically love that movie. It's so I remember seeing it's so it. weird. It is so weird. It's so, oh my god! If you that, I'm pretty sure that movie is the reason they weren't allowed to do any kind of Nintendo related movies for the next a time. really long time. Yeah, 1993. 1993. Yeah. If you look up yeah. the trivia on IMDb, which I I highly recommend you do, it is just wild all the way through. <laughs> There's um apparently somebody pieced together like a director's cut of it and it's it's online somewhere I forget I was reading about it I'm like oh I should totally watch that I just I never have where it like kind of makes the story make more sense uh and kind of builds on things but if you haven't seen that movie track it down and then shake your head through the whole thing like what is hap what is hap happening but anyway, the Illumination Mario movie. I haven't seen it yet. I probably will. But yeah, it's fun. I think it's a fair comparison just from what I have seen of both of these things. Um, because again, I am only being told these stories by Ange with some heavily curated pictures of Muddlefoots to get me through. But yeah, it sounds sounds pretty pretty much like a here's a thing. It is your childhood. Enjoy. Yeah. And uh, yeah. and also, I find like it's pretty accessible for any kids who were to pick this up at random. Relatively straightforward. Yeah, it's uh, it is inoffensive. The art is pretty uh, good too. I think now the artist found his stride in that the art definitely looks more consistent for the most part mm. in terms of the style, and you can definitely see more of his own style now. And it's just, I would say. Issue three and issue four is where he's found that happy medium. He's gotten used to drawing these characters. Yeah, for sure. And it, it just seems like you said some of the colors are off. I guess he must have read somewhere about her eye color because it has been corrected. Her eyes are green now. Well, that was one thing. Like, and it's not all kids in the show, but I always liked that she was kind of like a pale yellow and Hawker was yellow because, you know, like little ducklings and chicks mm -hmm. and stuff, they are yellow. I always thought that was so cute. But then again, you know, like the kids in the fan club, they weren't yellow. So there's no continuity in Dark Green Dark Tad Stones defies all of us. So that is issue four. Uh, I guess issue five. The rise and fall of Pudding Boy. The rise and fall of Pudding Boy. So issue five will be next month at some point in time. And until then, we will continue to watch episodes. Yeah, we got a, a Negaduck one. Yes. yes. Bad luck. Uh, bad luck duck, where presumably the characters will be miscolored at least once, as is tradition in <laughs> Dark Queen Duck. Absolutely. 
<laughs> so maybe that's just a nod to the show all the time. Mm-hmm. These comic people just color it wrong. And they're like, shut up. Steelbeak was wearing five jackets in five seconds. We will touch on some bad luck ducks next time. Until then, remember that crime doesn't sleep and neither do we. And neither does Bushroot when he thinks about the school gardening. Landscaping? You know what I mean. Quitting high five. <laughs>